Hey there everybody, welcome back to Cheap Brew. I'm Anthony and today we're embarking on our cheapest project yet, a hard apple cider. To illustrate just how cheaply I'm doing this project, let's run through the ingredients and all the things that you'll need for this terribly difficult project. You're gonna need one gallon of apple juice. When you're picking your juice, you need to look really closely at the ingredients. If there's any preservatives in there, you're gonna want to get a different brand. I bought this because in the ingredients, the only thing listed is apple juice. We're gonna use two of these 64 ounce pure pressed Honeycrisp 100% apple juices. You're also gonna need one pound of brown sugar. This I bought from Target for $1.79 and I can do two batches with it. To add the ciderness to our hard apple cider, you're gonna need a cinnamon stick and this was $3.39 and some cloves, which this whole thing was $4.59 and this will last me for like a decade. On top of that, you're gonna need yeast. I'm going back to my Lauvin D47 because I have a bunch of this in the fridge. We'll see how it works. It's recommended to use a wine yeast for this, but I don't want to. Finally, the last two things are totally optional. You could use raisins, but I'm using yeast nutrient. I'm gonna add a little bit of this so that the yeast stay nice and healthy. And because the Honeycrisp juice is so cloudy. I'm gonna try a little bit of pectic enzyme as well and see what that does. After doing all the math, I'm out $15.97. So our first step is going to be to take one of the apple juice bottles, pour it into a pot, bring it up to a low heat, enough to add our one pound of brown sugar to it and get it to dissolve very easily. Then we can add the other jug to help cool it down and then add some spices, let it sit, and that's about it. I'm starting to think that all that sugar is dissolved. It's about 134 degrees in the hottest part so far. I think we're ready to add our second jug into the mix. I just added our stick of cinnamon and three or four cloves into our apple cider. We're gonna let that steep for 20 minutes and then we're going to come back and we're gonna check the gravity of this situation. While we're waiting on that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with a small yeast starter. I'm gonna use some of this apple cider on our yeast starter so that they're used to what they're gonna be eating for the next three or four weeks. So it's been 20 minutes and it's now time to take a gravity reading. On a side note, the yeast really, really like the apple juice. They're already foaming up. So we got a gravity of 1.080, potential alcohol of about 11%, which is just freaking insanely high, much higher than I expected. Let's add one teaspoon of our yeast nutrient and half a teaspoon of pectic enzyme to take care of that cloudiness. The last thing we're doing before adding the yeast is shake, shake, shake. This is gonna put oxygen into our, let's call it a must, which is beneficial to the yeast because it helps them perform all the biological functions that they are gonna need to do to give us ethyl alcohol. It's gonna be a good time for everybody. Done, let's add the yeast. And now we wait. She's right. We wait for about three or four weeks, however long it takes for it to stop bubbling completely so that we're not astounded by, the, well, she's pregnant, so that I'm not astounded by the flavor of the apple cider when it comes out the other end of the fermenter. I have a surprise for you mm. that I've already told you about. <laughs> we're gonna try the rest of the apple cider. Is it poison? Yes. It smells surprisingly like apple cider. Really? Every single time. It's too sweet. Well, to be fair, to her point, it does have brown sugar in it, and the yeast are going to eat it and create alcohol. Ooh. Who needs chocolate? Me. <laughs> <laughs> this is like drinking a fast break bar. I can't drink it. Yeah, me either. Ooh. Let's, uh, let's just pour that down the drain. Well, I hope your cider turns out. It will. Damn. There's a lot of sugar in there. 
You are free to leave. Nobody loves me. This is the equivalent of her handing me my wedding ring. Well, fast forward a few weeks, we're now on day 51 of fermenting our hard cider, and it is done, like done done. We have a gravity, I just took a minute ago, of 0 0.995. I like my drinks to be on the sweet side, so what that gravity means is that we fermented out all the sugar and I have to back sweeten it a little bit to get the taste that I want. My game plan is to take some of this brown sugar that we started with, maybe a quarter cup, stir it in there, and then take another gravity reading and see if it just peaks over one just a little bit, like 1.0 or 001. So after five eighths of a cup of back sweetening, I finally reached a gravity of 1.002. Now that we're ready and we've back sweetened, let's bottle. So I've pre-cleaned and sanitized seven 12-ounce bottles and a 25-ounce bottle. I've also sanitized nine bottle caps just in case I mess one up with the crimper. The only thing left is to organize them all on the floor and start bottling. There you go everyone, eight bottles and one of them was a 25 so really you could get nine out of uh, nine 12 ounces out of that batch. I even ended up with a little extra that I'm going to try right now. So let's examine this hard apple cider here. It'll probably taste better as it ages out because it's essentially a wine made from store-bought apple juice. It smells like a cheap hard apple cider. Yeah, it's definitely a cheap apple cider. Here goes nothing. Well, it's not my best work. I like the beers better. There's too much emphasis on the spice in here. So if you do this, less spice, and as I expected it, more back sweetening. Yeah, there's just not a lot of apple hitting it there. So maybe back sweeten it with a little bit of apple juice as well. I do think that there's still time left for this to clear as well as it goes into a longer kind of secondary fermentation. A, a little bit more clarity should come out of this, I think. Hopefully there's not a bunch of yeast left in here because all that sugar I added is just going to carbonate those bottles and then I'll have a big mess in the, in the closet. I don't think that's going to happen though. Anyways, long story short, I won't call this a failure yet. It's a, it is what it is. I will say that. It is a hard apple cider and it, it finished out, what did we start with? 1.080. So 1.080 was a potential alcohol of 11%. We fermented below one, so we know we got 11%. It's just insanely dry. It would taste a lot better with apple juice. I wonder if I have any. I do not. Anyways, try this at home. Do something different. I am optimistic that this will get better with age, but in the meantime, that will have to do.